Hey, Tommy, well, what'd you see this week? I saw diddly shit. <laughs> hey, Tommy, what did you want to see this week? I wanted to see everything. <laughs> movie toast and we're coming from coast to coast this week we got tommy b Corey e and adam h hi guys how you doing doing splendid thanks for asking uh what movies did you see this week oh i saw two movies this week first up i saw the new horror film the grudge i say it's more like the fudge because it was a fudgy movie it was a big letdown to me horror fans might like it it ties into the japanese movie jono after that little women it was a splendid movie really all around top notch directing acting writing set design wardrobe oh it was just a splendid affair you should check it out if you get a chance fellas so uh you guys see anything this week i saw nothing (laughs) Uh, i didn't see anything either you're the only one tell me what did you want to see this week well i was going to go see uncut gems and we were going to go see jumanji and we didn't end up seeing either of them so yeah i got sent a whole bunch of dvds by an organization that wants me to grade them for an award show so i'll probably Probably watch those for next week. Oh, what did you receive? Did you receive the film Little Women? Let me check. Tommy, you should go definitely see Uncut Gems. It's a mindfuck. Adam Sandler at his prime here. There's a lot of craziness that happens. Also, Jumanji, the next level. Very good movie. You like Jumanji? Welcome to the jungle. You'll dig this one. <laughs> I There's did not a get Little Women. Well, what did you get? I can't tell you. Tommy, you want to read the headlines? <laughs> We don't have too many headlines this week, but we got one here. It looks like Mallrats 2 is back on. I never knew it was off. So, um, Did you ever know it was on? <laughs> no. I never well, knew then it was on for it to be off and then back on again. Kevin Smith recently announced that he's working on Mallrats 2 again. 2019 was a great year for Smith as he finally put out his Jane Silent Bob reboot. It only went on to make $3 million. That's a huge success here, Tommy. Uh, I can't Is stop it? doing this voice. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, he. Uh, it's pretty much self-financed by fans for fans from Legion M Films. But he's been taking this show on the road with him and Jay Muse, going city to city, four-walling it himself and doing his own shows. Not a big theatrical release. <laughs> four-walling it. Yeah, pretty much he would book the theaters himself and take all the money from it, getting the proceeds himself. So it looks like he wants to call it Twilight of the Ball Rats. And it's going to include like 20 people from the first movie coming back. Very excited for Stan Lee's return. It's going to be good. Oh, he's, he's, but he's, what? What, what, What's the matter, Corey? Stan Lee? Yeah, what about him? What about Stan Lee? He said he's going to be in the movie? Oh, yeah, yeah. He was in the original. Um, Things have changed since then, Adam. Yeah. Why? He uh, stopped acting? What? All right, so pretty much back in the day, he was trying to do it. He shopped around a bunch of different studios. Nobody wanted it, not even Netflix. He thought he'd do it as a TV show. Nobody wanted it that way either. Yeah. And now that Jane Silent Bob reboot is making money, they're doing this. Oh, that's and- right. J- the Jason Lee character, Brody Bruce. Yeah. Trying to save the mall. The mall's about to close. And so he's trying to save it. He's going to have like a Comic Con Mallathon kind of thing to keep the mall alive. And they originally wanted to call it, this is cool, Mall Rats 2 Die Hard in a Mall because they were going to have like a Die Hard kind of th- thing with terrorists taking over the mall. But that was back in 2015. So we'll have to wait and see what he plans on doing with Mall Rats 2. That could be interesting, but he kind of used a little bit of that concept in Reboot. So I don't want to spoil it for people who haven't seen it. I think he's going to have to change that up a little bit. I probably won't watch the reboot until it's like on Netflix or... That's your safe bet. You guys want to know something interesting about me? You don't like Kevin Smith? Of course. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. I don't hate. Um, No, what I was going to say was I didn't know what Mallrats was. (laughs) (laughs) Whoa. That's that's cool. Yeah, not a lot of people saw the movie. It was a big flop when it came out, but now it's like a cult hit. I liked it. Yeah, it's it's one of my favorite. The only movie uh, that he put out around when when all his movies were coming out that I didn't enjoy, I bet you can guess what it was, Adam. Chasing Amy? It's chasing Amy. Isn't there one where he like makes someone a, a walrus? Yeah, that's Tusk, one of his later movies. Yeah. Uh, that being said, I didn't like Clerks 2 either. I really did. Sorry, I like Clerks 2. <laughs> Why didn't you like Clerks 2? Yeah, let's talk about that. I just, it was, I don't know, it felt like it was forced. Did you not like Kinky Kelly and the Sexy Stud? Uh, don't remember that part. Did you not like movies? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, if you did not like Clerks 2, I urge you not to see Jane Silent Bob reboot. <laughs> That's all I can say. I, I'll say this. I like That's I, forced. I liked every one of his movies before that, uh, except for Chase Game. Okay. This is something I'm more interested in. Tommy, what's the next story we're talking about? <laughs> so the next story uh, is about Quentin Tarantino is aiming for a four-hour cut of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood next year. Wow. Four hours. That's that's going to be a good nap. Yeah. Every time Adam has watched this movie or attempted to watch this movie, he's fallen asleep. (laughs) What is he going to do? Do like a little re-release of like Infinity War so they could get the box office numbers? No, I don't think they'll do that. Do you think it's going to be like uh, what they did with Hateful Eight and split up into segments uh, as a series on Netflix? No, I think they're going to put it out as a box set. Oh, I'd watch it. I really enjoyed the movie. Yeah. Do you think Bruce Lee will have his glasses on longer so you and other fans can be excited and think it's a ghost? (laughs) Stan Lee will hop in there with him? Think it's a ghost. Don't bring Stan Lee into this. Okay, I'm sorry. (laughs) He's a gentle man who's resting now. That's true. Anyway, hey, Tommy. (laughs) Yeah, Corey. (laughs) I'm working our way to this story. Why don't you tell us the headline? Terry Gilliam is tired of white men being blamed for everything. And he calls the hashtag Me Too a witch hunt. When it comes down to it, the director is, quote, tired as a white male of being blamed for everything that is wrong with the world. I didn't do it, end quote. God, this is like a tinderbox, man. You know, this whole thing, I, I think his, if you read his quotes, a little, a little emotional. Maybe not maybe not being very logical about what he's saying. Oh, here's another quote. So when talking about uh, Angelica, a character in the movie played by Joanna Ribeiro, he brought up the Me Too movement. This is what he had to say. This is a doozy. In the age of Me Too, here's a girl who takes responsibility for her state. Whatever happened in this character's life, she's not accusing anybody. We're living in a time where there's always somebody responsible for your failures, and I don't like this. I want people to take responsibility and not just constantly point a finger at somebody else saying, you've ruined my life. Yeah, I said, Me Too is a witch hunt. I really feel there were a lot of decent people or mildly irritating people who were getting hammered. That's wrong. I don't like mob mentality. These were ambitious adults. You know what I'm saying here? Like, it sounds a little emotional. Like, this guy lives on the internet a little bit too much because these little themes in here, it's not real life. It's like internet culture, like witch yeah. hunt stuff. That's like a lot of media. So this guy's consuming media a little bit too much. It's getting in his head. Man, he's take a chill pill, maybe. My personal opinion. Yeah, sounds right to me. Like, um, how, how do you go about saying that shit? Like, it's so frustrating. Oh, Tommy, read the next quote. Yeah, I was just looking at that. So That's fun stuff right so, there. So, that's so, that's no, an no, afternoon with Barney and friends. So <laughs> during the, then the interview continues and Harvey Weinstein came up in the interview. He said, quote, Hollywood is full of very ambitious people who are adults and they make choices. We all make choices. And I could tell you who did make the choice and who didn't. I don't like the term black or white. I'm now referring to myself as a melanin light male. I can't stand the simplistic tribalistic behavior that we're going through at the moment. I'm getting myself in deeper water so I have to trust you. I'm talking about being a man accused of all the wrong in the world because I'm white skin. So I better not be a man. I better not be white. Okay. Since I don't find men sexually attractive I've got to be a lesbian. What else can I be? I like girls. These are just logical steps. I'm just trying to make you start thinking. You see this is the world I grew up in and with Python we could do this stuff. We weren't offended people we were giving people a lot of laughter the fuck does any of that have to do with people getting like raped and sexually assaulted by a fucking shithead like what the fuck you were satire you were a comedy group yeah that's cool but not going and doing this shit in real life i mean i just stand by what i said before like he's just spending a little bit too much time consuming news media i think and on the internet man needs to like go to hawaii lay out on a beach drink a corona do you guys think he just doesn't want to work again so he's saying all this shit (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no i think i think he i don't know maybe yeah i loved all the monty python shit time out from the news i forgot to so you guys we were talking earlier about the movies we watched so it, i didn't see anything in theaters but what i did do was i got myself a subscription to disney plus and i've been re-watching all the marvel movies from iron man and now i just got to age of ultron that sounds like a tedious exercise a pain i'm going through in order exercise. not chronologically but like from when they came out in theaters. The only problem is, I found this out later, Disney Plus does not have all the Marvel movies because there's a couple movies right 
now that are still on Netflix. And until Netflix takes them off, they're not going to be on Disney Plus. But once Netflix takes the movies off of there, then they're going to come over. And that's like, I think, Ant-Man and the Wasp and Infinity War. But the new Spider-Man movies, Sony's going to have to make another deal with Disney Plus. Those, I believe, are going to Stars because Stars does get some of those movies. But did you hear in the news? I know I didn't put this link in the news articles, but things are actually already disappearing from Disney Plus. I saw, yeah. I they are? Yeah. There was a... Like Home Alone, Home Alone 2, Dr. Doolittle, a bunch of random, the Sandlot. Well, I mean, they're probably, I mean, the Home Alones are kind of like Christmassy, aren't they? Yeah, but I guess someone else has the rights to do it, and they kind of let them borrow the rights for the holidays. Oh, well, I mean, like, it's just like a slow start. I mean, Disney's slowly going to not extend licensing contracts that Fox had extended for the last however long, and it'll all get consolidated. Mickey will consolidate his power. I shouldn't say that. Edit that out. Did you watch Mandalorian, Corey? Um, no, I've been working a lot. Everyone I know on the face of the earth is talking about The Witcher and The Mandalorian to the point where I don't have to watch either of those TV shows. I know everything that happened in them. <laughs> Fair enough. I have not watched The Witcher, so I won't even bother you with that. So shall we resume our news and go to the next article? Yeah. Uh, the Joker director wants to see a Batman movie set in Arthur Fleck's universe. This could be interesting. So Todd Phillips, uh, who we all know from movies like War Dogs and Hangover. Uh, yeah, Hangover, uh, old school. So Todd Phillips would like to see someone make a Batman movie in uh, Joker's version of Gotham that he created. He made it abundantly clear that his movie does not reside within Warner Brothers DCEU. I don't know. Is, does that sound like it's more of a knock on Jared Leto and the DCEU? Or does it sound like he's trying to cover his own behind? I don't know what he's talking about because the DC universe is a total mess. And if I tried to get into the DCEU, I'd get lost and I'd end up somewhere else. Probably. I think the last movie I watched in the DCEU was uh, Aquaman. <laughs> Oh man, that movie was more like Snowman. <laughs> I fell asleep watching that one too after I, like I went to a Tenacious D like concert. Aquaman and Wonder Woman are probably my two favorite in the DC EU. You should check out Shazam, just as which cool is great. You know what I like about Todd Phillips that I just forgot about until just now is that he did that what is widely considered a horrible movie of Starsky and Hutch in the uh, mid 2000s. I love that movie. That was great. I loved that movie too. And he also did Old School, which mm-hmm. I did not know. Movie. Didn't he do um, Due Date? Yes, I went to the premiere of that. Yeah. That was amazing. That's like a modern day planes, trains, and automobiles. Oh, Due Date with Robert Downey Jr. and Jamie. Fo- oh, he- Zach yeah, Galifian Jamie Fox is in it. Jamie Fox. Yeah, Jamie Fox. I love that movie. It was that great. Was, Anytime I watch Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, I have to follow it up with Due Date. Dude, it's, it's that's so the cool. kind of movie I want Robert Downey Jr. to do. What is Doolittle? Yeah. What is he doing right now? <laughs> Doolittle is a wait. payout of cash he money. He doesn't need money. I waited for 10 years to have Robert Downey Jr. do something besides Iron Man. And he comes out and he just trolls <laughs> my ass with Doolittle. I'm a Robert Downey Jr. fan. I, so I Doolittle as in like Dr. Doolittle, like the Eddie Murphy. Yeah, did you not know that there's a new Doolittle movie coming out like in two no, weeks? I saw it in the release schedule, and so I didn't know. He had enough sense to stop being Mr. Peanut. He should have enough sense to do a really awesome movie where he can show off his acting chops. Unless he doesn't Wait, he was that. Mr. Peanut? For like oh two days God. in 2008, you know, he was. You know, really? brother, you know what my brother put on the other day while we were eating dinner? He put on Holmes and Watson. Oh. oh. Such a... I could not, the first time I watched it, I couldn't sit through the whole thing. This time <laughs> I watched just enough to finish the <laughs> and that was it. I turned it, I didn't turn it off because they were still watching it. But. Tommy, you know, Adam and I have had a fraught history with uh, Holmes and Watson. Mm-hmm. It's so bad. Did you guys think of it? Oh, it was dog shit. It was okay. dog shit. You know what made me think of Holmes and Watson though, is looking at the picture for Doolittle and I saw Robert Downey. It just made me think of his Sherlock Holmes and then I was just like, oh yeah, they did make a spoof of that movie and it was horrible. They need to make a spoof of the spoof. Let's finish the Joker thing. We didn't really get into okay. a lot of oh, it. Okay, yeah. I don't know how I would feel about a Batman in that universe. I think it's a shitty idea. Yeah. They could continue the storyline from Joker with more of the Joker, but I don't think they should include any other characters. Yeah, we've never actually seen him build up to become the clown prince. So let's watch that. Yeah. We, we saw the descent into madness, but let's see what's next. No superhero needed. Yeah, like, let's just watch another Joker movie without what about Batman in it. Harley Quinn. Well, yeah, she could. That would have been a cool little nod at the end if she was the one talking to him in the mental institution right before he 
escape. Right? Yeah, I think that could be cool. Yeah, well, I mean, sure. But I don't think that's going to happen because Margot Robbie has, like, the particular Harley Quinn, and they don't want to let go of that, probably. See, this is what I'm talking about, though. Like, there's two Harley Quinns that is played by the same person in two different universes, and then there's this Joker, and then there's the other Joker, and then there's, like, a Batman over here who's not related to the Joker, and then you have the whole Aquaman-Batman thing that I don't think is continuing, but I don't know. Like, it's a mess. And don't forget that the, we had Suicide Squad, and now we're having the Suicide Squad, which isn't a reboot or a continuation. It's kind of a different thing, but has some of the original cast in it. And let's not forget when Superman and Batman became friends and allies because their mom had the same first name. Why'd you Here's... say that name? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I rewatched that a couple of weeks ago. I still fucking like that movie. That movie is really good, guys. It gets a bad rap. I will stand beside it. I watched that movie. It was never good. <laughs> Yeah, I guess, been better. Here, let me say something. Let me say something I feel about about franchises in general with with like the DCU. So franchises, right? You build a canon, and every once in a while, you're building the canon of the universe, and a couple of your movies totally fly off the handle and they suck, and they make no money, and all your fans have a huge backlash. I'm looking at you, Star Wars, right now, but like also the DCU, who kind of pathetically just jumped on the Marvel bandwagon and tried to put together like their own thing haphazardly this is what all these corporations refuse to do because they're greedy but what they need to do is they need to just let the intellectual property the universe or whatever you want to call it just just like mellow out just don't touch it for a while and then reset it you know who did crossovers and groups thrown together pretty well who framed roger rabbit he had mickey mouse he had uh, bugs bunny he just had everyone kind of thrown together and it wasn't a gimmick it was just like oh there's a cool cameo oh well, we're in tune town but you know who produced that robert zemeckis and uh, what's his face spielberg Reduced. But so what you were getting at though, Corey, it's kind of like what they did with Spider-Man, you mean? Or was that even a bit much? Yeah, like, okay, so you have the third bad Spider-Man where he's dancing, it's all emo, <laughs> universally disliked. And then you waited, what? What did we wait? We waited like five to seven years? Give or take, yeah, not even. Right, we got the amazing Spider-Man, which did okay for one film and then really badly for the second film. Yeah. And then we waited like three years. Or no, it was actually more like five years. Three yeah, years there was a little years. gap there. Yeah. a little gap there. It's got to be like a three-year gap. Like how movies used to be when they made their sequels. The sequels came out three years later. They don't do that anymore. You guys ready for the new Matrix movie? <sighs> I'm just fucking, I'm messing around. I'm messing around. When is that coming out? I don't know. Uh, like next year. Weren't we supposed to do like a segment on what we're looking forward to in 2020? Yeah. I'm going to give an honorable mention real quick before we start. The New Mutants is supposedly getting released in April 3rd, 2020 still, which is something we discussed quite at length in one of our previous episodes nothing has changed there not only that but they're going back to actually giving the original director's cut that fox didn't want to show interesting disney actually likes it okay so you want me to start movies i'm looking forward to all right so january i got uh bad boys for life i'm looking forward to that one gretel and hansel i didn't even know about the movie but i read a little bit about the movie it looks like it's gonna be a scary movie so Corey might not want to watch that (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I want to watch like four movies in 2020. So so that's it for January. I'm looking through February. I don't see anything in February. Then we go down to March and Quiet Place Part 2, uh, which I just saw the trailer for that, which we might talk about in a little bit. Yowie, kazowie. That's uh, a good looking movie. Uh, New Mutants, I'm looking forward to. Then we got you bet. going into May, Black Widow's coming out. I'm looking forward to that. Then we have Fast and Furious 9. I'm always looking forward to the next next Fast and Furious movie. Not just Fast and Furious Presents, but an actual Fast and Furious 9 movie is coming out in May. So I'm looking forward to that. Wonder Woman 1984, I'm looking forward to that. Top Gun Maverick, that's the number one movie I'm looking forward to that's coming out in June. Then we go down to Ghostbusters Afterlife in July. I'm looking forward to that. The Purge 5, and I wouldn't say I'm looking forward to it, but I'll probably end up seeing it. And we continue down into August, and we got Bill and Ted Face the Music. I'm looking forward to that. And The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. <laughs> It's a funny title, but I'm looking forward to it. I love (laughs) love the Conjuring movies. Let's see. Going into October, we got Venom 2 coming out. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Then we have, I don't know what Halloween Kills is, but I think that's the sequel to the last Halloween movie. Uh, Okay. I might have to see the last Halloween movie before I see that one. You know what it's on? It's on HBO. Ooh. Then if we go into 
November, I, we got the Eternals. I'm actually looking forward to that. That one's going to be. I wasn't looking forward to it when it was first announced, but um, reading now about that you it, see Kamal's sexy new hunky body, you're probably looking forward to it. <laughs> and then funny. finishing up in December, we have Coming to America, the sequel to Coming to America, and. Actually, there's a movie in, coming in late December called Tom and Jerry. I'm actually, I uh, didn't know anything about it, and I just looked it up right now. And it's supposed to be when Tom first met Jerry and how their feud began. And it has a pretty sweet cast, doesn't it, if I recall? Yeah. So those are those are my movies that I'm looking forward to, Adam. Oh, boy. Dad. <laughs> Is that what we are now? Are we just, like, reading lists to people? Because I'm down for that. <laughs> Adam's like, uh, you know, basically, I want to see every movie. I might actually go see Doolittle now that I know Robert Downey. Why don't you tell us about all the movies you might not see? How about that? Okay. Now, that could be fun. All right. So let's start here. Um, all right, Adam. Go for it. What do I not want to see? Never really sometimes. Times always. I don't know what that is, so I won't see it. I still believe I'm uh, the climb, the truth, Saint Mud. I'll tell you what I want to see. It's a quick list. I'm gonna see a lot more. Trolls World Tour. I love the first Trolls movie. Didn't like the holiday special. Haven't seen the cartoon because that's a fake cast. But this one looks bad apples, guys. It looks sweet. Bad boys for life. I used to be a giant Will Smith fan, so I can't wait to see him. And I guess Martin Lawrence needs a paycheck. New Mutants, like Corey said, that I've been super jazzed about. That's going to be a dark horror movie, and Disney is releasing it, and I hope somehow it works into the MCU. But, hey, like we said earlier, don't force it. Let it happen. Uh, Bloodshot. Who doesn't want to see this new wacky Vin Diesel superhero movie? It looks bonkers, guys. Check out the trailer. Antlers. That movie looks like some fun horror as well. Are these in order? Yeah, I don't know. fart into the mic right now. Uh, Chris Rock saw. I don't know what they're calling it, but I'm calling it Chris Rock saw. Sam Jackson and Chris Rock in a Saw movie. Story conceived by Chris Rock. <laughs> Sign me the heck up. <laughs> Wonder Woman 1984. You betcha. I'm there. Ooh, I worked on this movie for a day. Free guy starring Ryan Reynolds. I want to get behind that. Bill and Ted face the music. Didn't like Bill and Ted's bogus journey, but I'll check this one out. The King's Man. Oh, I saw a clip of this at New York Comic Con. It looks fun. And I like the last two. Oh, Last Night in Soho. New Vega Wright movie. You bet I'll be in that seat. I told Turtles. you, he's, he's just going to see every movie this next year. <laughs> <laughs> That's Halloween. all there is to it. <laughs> I didn't like the last Godzilla movie, but I did like Kong because John Goodman was in it. So I'll see Godzilla vs. Kong coming to America. We talked about that once before. Promising Young Woman. This movie looked pretty cool. I watched the trailer recently. This woman goes around, pretends she's drunk, almost lets guys rape her, but then she gets revenge. It's pretty cool looking. Antebellum. Ooh, time travel, crazy stuff. Looks cool. And this week comes out underwater. I want to get under that water. That's what I want to see, guys. Corey, what do you want to see? Not nearly that much. I mean, I will inevitably be dragged to like most of these movies, but... (laughs) But um, I want to see Doolittle because I'm a Robert Downey Jr. fan. Have been since I saw Less Than Zero, like a hell of a long time ago because I'm old. And then there's a long time. Wait, do you really want to see Doolittle? I want to see Sonic the Hedgehog because they wasted a lot of time and money redoing the CG. (laughs) Oh, I want to see that. I want to see The Call of the Wild because Harrison Ford is like, whoa. That CG dog looks awesome. That CG dog. I want to see the new James Bond, No Time to Die. And then I think I want to see Dune and I want to see Tenet, which is Christopher Nolan's new movie. And that's it and there's two there's two movies i wanted to mention in here that all my basic friends are very excited about that i just am really gonna dislike <laughs> watching ghostbusters afterlife all my friends want to see it i don't want to see it free that guy. trailer looks bad. all my friends want to see it don't want to see free guy sorry Adam. shut up they gave me a paycheck uh, <laughs> jungle cruise all my friends want to see it i don't want to see it some of my friends also want to see onward and i don't want to see it anyway you guys want to know who won the golden globes because while we've recorded this they've they've ended <laughs> no oh, wait, wait i'm gonna take my headset two- off i get it on the dvr i have two movies that i want to add underwater i forgot about that one and free guy yeah 
I want to watch. I'm looking Thanks for jumping you, on the train. Tommy wants to watch Free Guy. Okay. I just said how basic. Those are the two. I, watch Free Guy. I think I'm, I'm just tired of the 80s and I'm tired of video games. I think that's Did you guys see there's the new CG animated Scooby Doo movie? Scoob? Yeah. I'll watch that. I know Even you. Even though will. there's the. I, uh, I think it's like a redo of a pup named Scooby Doo. So, um, Adam, you want to take your headset off and I'll very quickly tell people who won the Screen Actors Guild Awards? Can, can, can I, can I just Golden Globe uh, tell movie? you who I think should have won? That's gonna take forever. Uh, give me like a long. give me a thumbs up when you're done. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go. Oh yeah, that's a good choice. Every now and again. All right. Okay. Headsets take off. it off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow, I'm gonna okay. mute my mic. I can still kind of hear you. Okay. Do what you gotta do, man. This guy's got it on the DVR. Can't know what happened. Um, let's not even talk about it right let's now. Let's not even. Let's just talk about other things. Yeah, uh, it could have been better. <laughs> what? He said it could have been Boo, better. Go back and check that ballot. Is he even listening right now? He's no, he's not. not. He's let's not. start just shit talking at him. Yeah, let's just talk who about it. Who even saw that movie or knows who that person is? <laughs> <laughs> um, great. So he's no probably going to keep doing that in the background. Oh, but, you know um, he I thought you had to be the best of the best to win that award. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like they gave it to some nobody again. <laughs> that is awesome. Okay, anyway, the best actor in a supporting role was Brad Pitt for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. The best performance by an actress in a supporting role was Laura Dern for Marriage Story. Best director was Sam Mendes for 1917. Best screenplay. Tyler Perry should have got that one. Okay. (laughs) Best screenplay was uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So Tarantino took that home. Best motion picture in a foreign language was Parasite, which was going to obviously happen. Who was the host? The host of what? Golden Globes. Let me me go through the list. Okay, okay. (laughs) Don't ask me, like, questions. Oh, I agree with that. That one one makes sense. (laughs) Oh, okay. (laughs) Best animated motion picture was Missing Link. I wholeheartedly disagree. I get on that train. I dig that award. (laughs) Best original song was Rocket Man. I'm going to love me again. Uh, Tommy does not look happy about that one. (laughs) Best original score was The Joker. And in television, Succession won. I don't even know if you're saying things. It looks like you're just moving your mouth to fool me. Earlier, we were doing that. Best television series in a drama was Succession. What a night for Hollywood. (laughs) Best television series. Musical or comedy was Fleabag. The foreign press really outdid themselves this week. Best what performance a show that was. Best performance by he he can't hear us right. He's just no, nothing, nothing. anybody make jokes about Bill Cosby? Okay. <laughs> Best performance by an actor in a television series drama was Brian Cox for Succession. Okay. I knew Lena Dunham would win it. Lena Dunham. What is he talking about? Yeah, well- Best performance by an actress in a television series drama was Olivia Coleman for The Crown. Right on. Best performance by an actor in a television series musical or comedy was Rami Youssef. Corey, you don't sound happy about that. He played himself? Tell us the truth. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. <laughs> That's Will Smith from the movie Concussion. Did that one an award? No, no, I didn't. I should have. Years ago. A couple of years ago, I guess, but he can hear me, right? Some of his some of his things he's saying are actually No, that's what's so funny about it. <laughs> Best performance by an actress Shrek in a television. Shrek won anything? Best performance by an actress in a television. He should have won something. Puss in Boots, I don't care about him. Oh my God. Although Music- Antonio Banderas, I bet, is a nice guy. Best performance by an actor in a television series was Phoebe Walter Bridge for Fleabag. You guys ever want to be a seat filler at one of these things and, and just see these celebrities up front? No. Like, I could take a piss next to Kevin Costner or something. <laughs> I don't want As- them hearing me poop, though. I, I did pretty loud <laughs> poops. Best limited series was Chernobyl. And then if uh, I ran out of toilet paper, I'd have to walk out and be like, excuse oh me, sir, God. do you have any Grey Poupon? <laughs> this is difficult. Keep going, keep going. I'm waiting for him to interrupt me. Ooh, that's the big award of the night, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Best performance fight actor in a limited series or motion picture. Made for TV was Russell Crowe. How long is this show? You're just going on and on about these awards. I feel bad for the people sitting in this this theater. Best performance by an actress in a limited series or motion picture made for television was Michelle Women's for Foss Verdon. I butchered the name. You tell it like it is, Corey. Yep. Best performance by an actress in a supporting role in a series, limited series, or motion picture made for television was Patricia Arquette for The Act. Sassy Molassie. 
And the best performance by an actor in supporting role or series, limited series, or motion picture for television was Stellan Skarsgård for Chernobyl. Yeah, he was very good in that. And I'm just, should I bring him back in here now? Or is he just going to keep doing this until we like give him? All right, I'm coming back in, guys. No headset on. Why'd you do that? Why'd you give him a thing? Oh, 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 sorry. One second. I'm I'm muting it. (laughs) Are you guys just talking crap about me? Well, I'm muted. That's a pretty smart move. I'm going to edit this. I feel bad for the listeners. Oh my Take god! Okay, I got nothing else to say about this. Ooh, that award! Whew. What Bring a back shock! In. Bring him back I'm, in! I'm excited. Those are some good winners. Ah oh, man! <laughs> if, only you knew, if only you knew, Adam. Oh my god! Wow, that was actually quite hilarious. <laughs> We should do that segment once a year. Every time there's an award show. Try to read the names before Adam interrupts you with some (laughs) Shrek BS. (laughs) That's the title of the piece. Uh, Oh, man. Were you guys happy with some of those wins? I was. as happy as you were. (laughs) (laughs) Do you want to go back and retake that and I will actually shut my mouth? No, that was classic. That was just... Uh gold oh boy any big upsets that you guys didn't see coming i honestly was more paying attention to your responses than <laughs> and looking to, at Corey trying to piece in the 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 winners in the between an, you. the oh i can't tell you adam can i because there was uh, one that yeah I, uh, go, go ahead go ahead it's okay good. i'm gonna so, mute you best motion picture <laughs> for Anna. he's not listening he asked me a question he's not listening he's not listening give a thumbs up what the hell uh, missing link won the animated oh my god missing link <laughs> i just un- unmuted that for that yeah. oh my god i don't okay, even know good. what it won now, now that it's ruined for you let me just explain this one surprise you asked me a question and then you signed off to not hear the answer <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> all right sorry right. so best motion picture this is one spoiler there's like 12 categories and like three hours to watch so but um the best motion picture in the animated department they had frozen 2 up how to train your dragon the hidden world toy story 4 up and the lion king i don't know how lion king is animated because i thought it was live action but now it's animated because it's award season because they're trying to get awards so they change what it is anyway mm-hmm. and then missing link was in that category <laughs> and missing link won <laughs> Oh my god, how did anybody besides me see that movie? It was I fell asleep. Well, that's I don't a, think that's a big so. trend. It's like I gotta what, stop going to the movies. Are they basing that off of the quality of the film or how hard it was to make? Because it like, sounds like to make. So I got an idea. We we go back through 2020 movies and we put an over under on how many movies he's going to see in full and how many he's going to fall. <laughs> <laughs> We'll do that in another episode. Yeah, I think we should end this episode. It's a lot of yeah. lists and a lot of really bad comedy. Oh, boy. Can we just promise our, our, our loyal listeners, if they actually made it this far, that we're not going to do lists like this all the time. We're just uh, we're just catching up to the to the modern days. It's we're getting century. back in the swing of things. Back in the saddle again. And hey, how, how was Cats, by the way? Cats is really bad. It was really hard to watch. Definitely... Don't go see it. We knew it was going to be bad going in. We saw the reviews. We went anyway. Thought it'd be so bad it was good. Nope. Didn't happen. Just bad. Don't go. They sing. They dance. The CG. I don't know. It wasn't, you know. Is the music okay? I I, know. I mean, (laughs) compared to what? Like. (laughs) Compared to Missing Link? (laughs) I didn't see Missing Link. Apparently everyone but you did and loved it. Apparently. But, um. Do you have that in your uh, DVD screeners? I got a large blue icy and a bunch of crunch, and I filled up the blue icy four times, and I got another bunch of crunch because I had to keep myself preoccupied. You went through two boxes of bunch of crunch. Yeah. What's, what's bunch of crunch? What's oh bunch my. of crunch? Are you a dumb dumb from Planet <laughs> Dumbville? <laughs> yes, what's I am a dumb dumb from Planet Dumbville. What's bunch uh, of crunch? I don't have a bunch of crunch. It's just like a crunch bar with, with little bite sizes. Uh, they okay. only sell them at movie theaters. Almost. Tommy only eats uh, Nestle dibs yeah. at movie theaters, which dibs, blows my mind. Dibs and uh, ices. That's it. If you go to the Lemley, they refrigerate their bunch of crunch. Refrigerated bunch of crunch is better than dibs. Oh. Whoa. Wow. I will keep an eye out for bunch of crunch. Only refrigerated is it better than dibs. Otherwise, Got it's it. not really comparable. Got it. All right, then. <laughs>
It was a pleasure to have you gentlemen here with me tonight. I hope everyone enjoyed today. It was quite the upset at the Grammys. We're talking about the Golden Globes, not the Grammys. We're talking about the Golden Girls, Blanche, Rose, <laughs> Sophia, oh Dorothy. Ooh, uh, God, ooh, I love those Golden Girls. It's a shame these people yeah. they leave us so soon. And on that note, let's leave on a dark note, everybody. Let's go. Let's go. Move, move. People who listen to us must just listen to us to to get an example of what three really stupid people sound like. (laughs)